and really, really think about making that decision. Really go back and under Derek, where he was literally dedicated the last how many years specifically studying. Jesus Christ. I just jumped to a random spot. It's like Derek, like right on my face. What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoreadates.com. Today we are going to be talking about Riley Pelfi. He is a young 18 year old bodybuilder who is, uh, looks to have a lot of potential. The guy has a great physique for his age. Um, even in general, he has a great physique. He has a better physique than a lot of, uh, you know, guys in their twenties in the fitness industry even. And, you know, I think it's pretty clear that it was not really, you know, achieved naturally though. The physique progression, um, was pretty, you know, saucy looking. And he makes this video called Am I Natural? The Truth. And, you know, presumably this is his, uh, you know, like coming out video about his uh, enhancement practices. And a lot of people have been asking me to react to it. So here we fucking are. And I'm going to give my uh, feedback. This is a pretty long one, though, dude. So how many times have I, <laughs> how many times have I said that? But this one is actually long. From 1630 to the end of the video, he's talking about this shit. So who knows what this is going to end up being with my feedback. So I have him on 1.25 times speed. I'm going to try and talk faster, as fast as he does. And let's get into it. All right, so what's going on, everybody? This is the part of the video that everybody's been waiting for. So the first thing I want to say and get out there and make clear to everybody is, no, I haven't been hiding the truth because I'm afraid to tell you guys. I'm going to give you guys literally the one reason and the only reason. And that's literally because my entire social media audience is based towards like a younger generation. All right. Why in the right mind of me would I promote <laughs> my decision onto other people? So with that being said, I feel like I'm at that age now. I'm 18 years old. I turned 19 July 16th uh, this year, obviously. And I felt like it was time to finally say it, dude. So I want to open up completely about obviously like my use, my experience. Uh so yeah, obviously a tough spot to be in if you are only any, you know, the, or the younger, the worse technically, because it's like the younger your audience probably skews and do you, you know, act like just nothing's going on and you do nothing or do you come out and tell the truth and then potentially inspire people more, you know, make them feel like they need to do the same thing if they want to end up looking like you, you know, it's a bit of a tough spot to be in because you're either, you know, misleading or just not saying shit or you are potentially leading in the wrong direction. You know, you never, uh, you never know how it could go. So it's a bit of a hard uh, decision to make. Uh, why I got into it, how I got into it, why I just don't promote it and why I don't feel the need I should promote it other than like right now, obviously. So like, I want to get the word out there because I don't want to lead anybody in the wrong direction and I don't want to mislead anybody saying like, oh, you can achieve this naturally and oh, I've achieved this naturally and blah, 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 blah. Like, I will show you guys what I achieve naturally. Like, I have nothing to hide, bro. I genuinely do not give a fuck who says it's a good idea and who says it's a bad idea. Obviously, I'm open, you know, if someone wanted to educate me a little bit more on this kind of shit, because in reality, I am new to this and I'm not perfect. Like, I'm not, I'm not a genius. I don't know everything that I'm talking about. And honestly, there's a complete possibility that I got my information from the wrong source and that could have misled me into doing the wrong things. And obviously he's 18, but like, look at the difference of the way he's talking versus the 14 year old on trend. Like they're both, you know, clearly too young to be on per performance enhancing drugs realistically, but this guy is like so logical sounding versus the 14 year old guy. It was just like, I guess the amount, the amount of growing up you do between 14 and 18 is quite substantial. So it's not even really a fair comparison, but it's like, it seems like he at least has a general understanding of like, you need to seek out information that's high quality. You can't just trust your fucking, you know, gym bro or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So everything comes down to a choice in life. My choice is gonna be completely separate from your choice. Jimmy's choice is gonna be completely separate from my choice. That's why I do not necessarily talk about this kind of shit often because in reality, I am 18 years old, you know, and <laughs> you know, man, let's just, let's just get into it, all right? So I might as well just send it. Obviously, I wanna start off with the reasoning behind why I decided to do what I did. And I'm gonna jump into a bunch of things, okay? I'm gonna jump into what I took, why I took it, and basically like my plan moving forward, uh, why I took things and what I was expecting, et cetera, et cetera. I wanna show you guys obviously like my natural growth from when I first started, because if you guys didn't know, I started when I was like 13 years old. If I'm being honest, I did start crossfitting when I was like 11, 12 years old. But I don't even wanna fucking talk about that shit, that's just stupid, but. <laughs> Basically, what made me make that choice of going against what everybody told me to do and sticking to what I want to do, all right? So this, this, is, this is basically where it all starts. This is, this is it. So I wanted to make a quick disclaimer, um, you know, whether or not the comment section is going to be filled with just absolute toxicity or not. 
it's fine, man. Uh, this is my decision. You know, I appreciate your guys' condolences and everything. And honestly, like, it means the world to me that you guys actually care about me. So whatever you say, even if it's negative, if it's positive, obviously it all comes from the heart. Obviously it all comes from, you know, deep within. And that's just your honest opinion about me. So I appreciate you guys obviously being transparent enough to the point where, like, you're not afraid of telling me off or you're not afraid of sucking my dick. I'm kidding. I don't expect any, I don't want any of you guys to suck my dick. July 13th, 2020, three days before I turned 18 years old was when I first, when I took my first, first, first injection. My decision making behind it was, it was around June. It was around June last year where I was basically like, to be honest, like, although that is way too early to start, it's interesting how off the bat he went to test injections. Cause you know, more often than not, you'll see guys who kind of do the, uh, I don't know, the entry level stuff, which even if they've been ad advised against it, they will typically still go to it. They'll do an oral only cycle. They'll do SARMs. They'll do blah, blah, blah. Even if, you know, down the line, they think they're going to get to, you know, they might get to something, the real shit, you know, in general, most teenagers are going into it, not going off the bat with injection. So that's uh, interesting how he went with that off the bat and he had that information kind of internalized already. I literally have to take a step back in life and reevaluate basically like what I want to do. Where do I want to go? How far do I want to dig into this shit? How far do I want to take my life into the bodybuilding industry, I guess you could say. And basically how I made this decision, you guys, was literally as simple as this. Put me into June of last year, okay? I'm looking back and I'm basically going like, all right, I'm 17 years old and my biggest goal, I shit you not, my biggest goal, and I know I can do this, man. I know I can do this. I want to become the youngest pro in class physique. Like it's as simple as that. I want to be the youngest pro in class physique. The biggest contributing factor to why I wanted to do what I did is literally just, I looked back, man, the last previous years. And in reality, if I wanted to, if I want to be the best, if I want to be the youngest pro, the amount of growth that I have basically acquired over the last few years is just is simply not going to. Yo, I apologize, you guys. My camera literally just died. So if things are kind of seeming like a little sus right now, it's because I'm filming on my phone. So. There you have it, there's my explanation. But as I was saying, basically I had to reassess like these last few years of progress, of growth, of muscle, literally extra contractile tissue placed onto my body. Not no water weight, not no fat weight, not no water retention, nothing along those lines. Like I want quality, pure muscle through my diet. Pure contractile fucking tissue, buddy. Dieting through my training, et cetera, et cetera. And if I'm being honest, like I said, put myself in June last year, the amount of progress that I've acquired over the last couple of years, just it's not good enough. It's not fast enough. It's not to the point where I can literally walk on stage this year and be like, I'm going to take that pro card. It's like, no, I have to take a step back and be like, all right, if I want to be serious about this and if I want to just stop talking out of my ass, I got to figure something out. So he started when he was 17, which is, you know, young as fuck. Um, and he's 18. He's kind of like full blown in the Sazul at this point. But the context is he's trying to become the youngest classic physique pro ever, which is like, are you going to accomplish that naturally? No, like simply put, you're not. So you know, obviously certain individuals, a lot of people are going to say this is a fucking horrible idea. Um, but, you know, everyone has their own goals and you can't knock him really for having a goal that he's trying to break a record here. You know, it's not a smart decision health wise, um, longevity wise, um, a myriad of different things. But at the end of the day, he has a goal that he's not going to reach without doing certain things and he accepts the risks. So, you know, it's kind of hard to be too judgmental when it's like you know like a lot of people will say too like oh i would have you know people who take gear for vanity like it's so stupid like you, you should only do it if you compete and it's like it's hard to know for certain if guys who actually say that who are competing would actually not take gear if they weren't competing and they're actually serious or if they're just using it as a cop-out to justify their use which i think is often the case to be honest so i don't know if that's really What's going on here, to be honest, but you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that if at the end of the day, if he wants to go pro in classic physique as the youngest pro, like he's going to have to fucking do some shit, unfortunately. So like, I understand the justification, at least if it was actually based on just that and not like actual vanity reasons other than that. So with that being said, you guys, I'm and by the way, don't fucking do it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, it's pretty obvious conclusion that should be made is anybody who's a teenager realistically should not really touch this shit because the likelihood that you understand even how to deploy this stuff in a responsible manner and even to make the most use of it and get the most results out of it with the minimal stress on organ systems is fucking low. Like you're not going to understand this stuff until you've researched it for years, to be honest. 
So, but again, that's for somebody who is, you know, looking at this stuff for him, he has his own justification. He's in his own realm of kind of uh, reasons to reinforce like why he's doing it. And, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's going to have their own judgment on whether this is a poor decision or a justified decision. I don't think anyone's ever going to say it's a good decision, but you know, everyone's going to have their own judgment on if this is a justified decision or not. And like, I can understand his logic at least. Let's just put it that way. I'm going to give you like a complete rundown of what my first cycle is, what I was expecting out of it on top of basically like the mistakes that I made and what I can learn from those mistakes so that I can be better next time. And so that I can actually do things a little bit more properly. So I'm not just like, so I'm not, so I'm not questioning everything that I'm doing. Right. Because that's, that's the biggest thing that kind of messed me up was since I'm brand new to it, all I basically knew, man, was like, all right, I want to be safe and fuck SARMs, dude. Like I am not going near SARMs. That shit is at the very bottom of my list. If I want to do this shit, bro, I'm going to just full send it and start painting with test. All right. So my first, first, first cycle was test. <laughs> my first cycle was 250 milligrams of testosterone E. All right. Test. He's laughing like it's like a, like it's strange, but in reality, like it's the first cycle that makes the most sense for the majority of individuals realistically. So it's not like it's, it's not like it's laughable realistically. So I, it's more so the context and how he's so young and like most people his age who are fucking around with shit would probably go to SARMs only or do like a fucking d only cycle or something like that. So anyways, like, is he going to go pro on SARMs? Like, no, you're, you're just not going to get to where you're going on SARMs only, especially when your goal is to become the youngest pro at uh, fucking ever. So. And I ran that for basically six weeks. So I started this cycle 19 weeks away from my show that I was supposed to be competing in on December 12th. Okay. That show got canceled. So we'll get into that after. But so as far as these dosages, 250 milligrams per week, half a milligram of Arimidex every day. So I don't know if that Arimidex was thrown in after determining that the estrogenic burden was too significant for him to handle on its own. But I would assume this probably could have been tolerated without the AI and you could have grown more out of it and had less stress on organ systems. So that AI, I highly doubt was necessary if diet was dialed in, micronutrient intake was dialed in, injection frequency was dialed in in terms of splitting it up um, as needed based on, you know, bolus amount spiking your E2 into the sky versus you know, what it would be if you were doing it um, on a more frequent basis. Like 250 is not a lot. And some people might even say that is low for a first cycle, given that you are shutting yourself down. It's almost like, are you going to shut yourself down to get a suboptimal amount of progress when, you know, you could easily take, you know, like the standard newbie cycles, like 500 milligrams. You know, everyone has their own kind of like determination on what a reasonable starting point is. But like for me, this is it's reasonable. You know, it's not, uh, it's not too high. It might even be a little on the low side, to be honest, it kind of depends. But I mean, for in general, it would kind of depend on if he actually needed this Arimidex or not. Cause if it was 250 tests to the point where you couldn't even tolerate that without estrogenic side effects, and you had to throw an AI on top of that, then I would say like 250 tests is probably too much for you. You should probably, you know, be stacking with something as opposed to just doing test but it gets a bit convoluted when it's your first cycle too like ideally you don't want to be using more than one agent on the first cycle when you have no idea what the fuck you're doing to begin with so you know it's a you know fine line to walk like in general if i could go back in time my first cycle was 500 tests i probably would have done something like 300 tests you know realistically i'm not saying that's what you should do or anything i'm just saying that uh you know this is quite a reasonable introduction i guess and but my stance on the dosage would likely depend on if he actually needed, needed this Arimidex or not, because I'm assuming this was probably a predetermined thing thrown in by the coach or whoever designed this without actually determining first off if he actually needed it or not. So um, anyway. My first cycle was 250 milligrams of test E per week and with an anti ester So basically what I was running for that was my Arimidex and I was doing 0.5 milligrams per week as a- Whoa, 0.5 milligrams per week? Start, okay. so. Okay, well, that's a lot more reasonable. I thought he was saying per day, you know, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would think. But it's like per week, dude, like what the fuck are you taking then? Like you're taking it once a week or you're taking, splitting it into daily dosages with like a micro amount or it's kind of an interesting approach to AI deployment. Like, did you even fucking need it? I don't, I doubt it. If you were using 0.5 a week, like increase your frequency of administration a little bit. Boom. You don't need to take the 0.5 once a week. Probably not. As a start, basically I ran that shit for, it was, it was, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I honestly forgot, man, but I'm pretty sure it was eight to nine weeks. And then after I basically did that, 
I got a new coach, okay? And this is where things kind of go downhill and things got a little bit sus and I started to get a little bit freaked out. And honestly, man, I appreciate the universe for like correlating with me and like aligning with what I want to do. But you literally canceled my competition in the perfect fucking time because if you didn't, I would have been on a bunch of other shit and I'm telling you guys exactly what I would have been on, why it freaked me out and what the fuck was going through my head at the time, why I did not want to do that shit. And you know, that was a big learning experience for me. So let's hop into it. What I did after about week eight, week nine of cycling, my little test cycle or whatever, just kind of dibble dabbling with it. Like, bro, I, I got a new, I got a new coach. Okay. I got a new coach and we're absolutely not saying names. Cause like, that's just, I'm not that kind of guy. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that. It's fucked up. Um, <laughs> it's not cool at all. So we were about 12, 10, 12 weeks out. Okay. And we had to make the decision. All right. What do we want to do from this point? Okay. I want to, we want to start adding certain things in. We want to start doing this and that testosterone isn't going to cut it for you. If you want to come in dick skin shredded, if you want to do this, if you want to do that, you guys know where I'm going with this. So what was the cycle that I was on? What's the cycle I'm referring to? It's going to freak you the fuck out. I'm not going to lie. What happened after I got this new coach? What See, it's funny how he's saying this and he realizes it, but I've seen this as a trend with like really young up and coming guys, they'll get thrown on like a fucking IFBB, like open bodybuilder cycle almost, or like a classic physique, like Olympia cycle. I've seen, you know, IFBB open Olympia classic cycles. I've seen open bodybuilder cycles and you'd be shocked, dude. You know, some of the guys who are at the amateur level will be running just as much shit and you know, their genetics just aren't as good. So then they won't respond as well. And then they think the coach thinks, oh, more is better. And that's what, what the fucking top guys are doing. And yeah, obviously top guys run a lot of shit too, but I mean, in general, if you don't get the response you want, everyone just assumes the answer is more drugs and it's often not the case. And especially on your first cycle, like, you know, throwing in so many fucking things. Like I've seen like men's physique guys on their like first shows running like grams of shit because their coach thinks they need to be on Tran, Masteron, Proviron, Winstrol, Anivar, all at the fucking same time because they don't have, somehow they all produce a little bit of a cosmetic effect that's different than all the rest of them that you absolutely need to have it in the cycle or else it's just gonna be unsuccessful, which is like, you know, fucking ridiculous, obviously. Well, everything got bumped up. Bunch of new shit got added in, et cetera, et cetera. So after my first cycle, this is what happened. I immediately got bumped up to 500 milligrams of testosterone E per week with one milligram of Arimidex per week, obviously. And then on top of that, I was on EQ. I don't know if he actually means per week or if he means per day for the Arimidex, but anyway, the, like that seems like a very infrequent, like I would imagine a coach who is dumb would be putting him on a milligram of Arimidex every day, not once a week. So it's just kind of weird how his coach is like, yeah, we're going to bump you up to 500 tests and we're going to give you one Arimidex every single week and that's it. You know, it seems odd to me. Boldenone acetate, I'm pretty sure I don't got the vial with me or anything. I just referred it to as EQ basically. It's just in simpler terms. Boldenone acetate or EQ? Because EQ would typically be boldenone undesalinate, which is a very long half-life relative to boldenone acetate. So I'm going to assume the fact that he's saying acetate, it's probably acetate, but that's interesting how his coach had him get a, like, fuck, I don't even know. It's not very common compound to see, uh, you know, like, especially at his age, like, it's very, I would think it'd be unlikely you'd have uh, even access to an underground lab that, like, makes that shit. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's more common nowadays though. I'm not a scientist. So like these big words kind of fuck with me sometimes, especially since like I'm very new to it. By the way, the only difference between boldenone undesalinate and boldenone acetate would be the half-life. So, you know, if you're tr familiar with trenbolone acetate, we're thinking like we're talking about the same ester here, you know, bold ace versus, you know, trend ace, same fucking shit essentially. Um, except with the, you know, parent compound being different. Undesalinate, on the other hand, is extremely long half-life, like one of the longest esters that there is to the point where, uh, but it's just interesting because typically that product would not be made with an acetate ester, at least from what I've seen historically. But I was on 500 milligrams of EQ per week. I was on 500 milligrams of test E per week. And I was on 0.5 milligrams of Arimidex per week. And I was on 25 milligrams of Winstrol a day. All right, so as far as the Arimidex, like at this point, if you could even tolerate the test E at that dose with the one milligram of Rimdex per week or, you know, per day, whatever it is, once you throw in 500 megs of bold on top of that, the likelihood that you're still going to need an AI is extremely low. Boldenone competes for the aromatase enzyme, whether it produces its own, um, it produces some sort of weird estrogenic metabolite that does not seem to interact with the estrogen receptor 
very effectively to the point that it causes major anti-estrogen-like broad-spectrum effects in the body to the point where it actually prevents testosterone from aromatizing into E2 significantly. And this is why you'll see in sensitive assay blood work that E2 crashes into the ground when you're on boldenone. So, and then you'll often get guys who, for some reason, they don't know why, but when they're on EQ, somehow they can tolerate upwards of, you know, 750 tests and all of a sudden they don't need an AI anymore. And they may even get low estrogen-like symptoms. Um, and they don't know why. And then they might get um, Roche uh, electrochemiluminescence immunoassay blood test results because no one's paying the extra money to get high sensitivity testing. And then they see their E2 is in the sky because it's cross detecting whatever the fuck the EQ is making. And then they wonder like, oh, my E2 is fine. So keep my AI in or add an AI because my E2 is too high or whatever. And they just crush their fucking estrogen into the ground even more. So it's a huge thing that I see uh, as an oversight in cycle design quite often is the fact that boldenone can be quite anti-estrogenic despite the fact that everyone seems to think it aromatizes at 50% the rate of testosterone into bioidentical estradiol, which makes no fucking sense, but it does not. So I did that for six weeks. I believe I did that for six weeks and we had, I was doing amazing, man. I'm going to be honest, that, that shit felt fucking amazing. Considering I have never taken anything in my life before, I had zero side effects, nothing went wrong. Like literally everything was like fucking tip top. Everything felt absolutely amazing. I don't know if it was maybe like a placebo, like my mindset was just really, really into it. The first cycle feels like you hit puberty again. So that's probably, that's the reason why, dude, in my opinion. This guy basically went from going through puberty, taking a tiny little break, and then going through puberty again on this fucking cycle. And I wasn't expecting anything bad to happen, so maybe that could have been it. Even though they were high doses and basically like for my little five foot nine, 210 pound body, that's, that's quite a bit for me to uh, be doing, especially on- There's a well-timed hair flick on the jump cut. Considering it's technically my first cycle, you know, after that, so after that cycle, we were about three weeks out from show. And basically we were at a point where we were like, you know, uh, we, we, we want to dig deeper. We want to dig deeper and we want to literally bring a package to the stage that is literally going to drop fucking jaws. Like literally just bleh, shit that literally like nobody has seen in years type beat. All right. So that's, that's my goal. Like that has literally been my goal. I don't, I don't succumb to average. I don't succumb to anything that people fucking think I can do. It's like, if I think I can do something and like, I literally pedal to the metal, believe I can do this shit. I will blow you away type beat. All right. Like, it's not just like a, eh, you're moderate, you're average. It's like, no, it's going to be like, what the fuck? Okay. So my coach. My coach basically said, all right, this is what we're going to do. And bro, I'm going to be honest. I only really know what like testosterone does, bro. And like just me even like learning about tests kind of blew me over the top because it's just it's so much shit to learn about, man. It's so much shit to learn about aside from dieting, aside from training. When you think you know everything, there's always something else that you got to learn about. So just so much information overload on my fucking brain. I didn't really understand what I was doing. So that's a big reason why I got a coach. Imagine trying to learn this shit while you're dieting for a show too. Your brain is like suboptimally functioning and you're trying to learn about the entire fucking <laughs> encyclopedia of pharmacology in like 12 weeks or some shit. It's an impossible task. You got to research this shit for years before you do it. And this is why, uh, you know, most people would benefit from waiting quite a bit longer than they do. So he can take that little bit of stress off my back, deal with the doses, deal with my cycle and everything, just so I don't have to think about it. So I can have less cortisol levels going into show so I can come in with a tighter, leaner, better looking package. I went down the best route that I thought at the time that I could go down, if that makes sense, okay? Like, if I were to run my own cycle by myself, I would honestly have no idea where to even start. So having somebody to do it for me just really, really helped and gave me that jump start, you know, and kind of really locked it into my head that like this is honestly stuff that you really need to learn about before taking it man big shout out to Derek more place obviously for being like my main source of information aside from that i'm gonna tell you guys what i was gonna say some of the shit he said almost like sounds like something i would say so freaked me out and basically why i'm very thankful uh to the point where my, my show got canceled type shit and like not a lot of people would say that so this is what was gonna happen so 500 milligrams of test okay same thing testy 500 milligrams of eq 50 milligrams of winstrol 25 milligrams per day of clenbuterol. I'm pretty sure it was 600 milligrams of master E. So I was two weeks out. Keep in, keep in mind, I was two weeks out. I have a long genetic line of. So master on propanate is what he's talking about, which is draw standalone. And he's on 50 micrograms of clenbuterol, 25 milligrams of winstrol, 500 milligrams of boldenone acetate, not EQ, um, presumably, and 500 megs of test. And something you should note too is, you know, like when it comes to hiring a coach, 
I've seen multiple times now guys who thought, oh, you know, this guy's a veteran in the industry. He's competed this many times. He's a, you know, 60 year old master's competitor. So he must have more experience than everyone. So he knows the most. I have a friend who literally almost died at a, uh, um, a provincial show. Actually, I think uh, Riley is also Canadian. He probably competes in at the same league that my friend almost fucking died in is he was listening to a coach who was a fucking moron. And I even told him, I was like, dude, your cycle's fucked. And this is a bad idea. And the guy had him load up on diuretics before the show and do a bunch of shit that almost made his kidneys and his heart fail. And he ended up having to quit bodybuilding and he could barely even get on TRT without worrying about his heart fucking failing from like, obviously, you know, a therapeutic replacement is, you know, healthy. But I mean, he was so paranoid about what happened from being on gear. And realistically, a lot of it was the gear that he was taking plus the diuretics, you know, at the end, obviously fucked him up the most, but he was so paranoid about gear thereafter that even just being on HRT freaked him out. And he was like, you know, having to go see a cardiologist constantly, having to check everything, make sure his uh, um, numbers were actually recovering and things weren't getting worse or even that, even just maintaining where they were, like the guy was almost fucking dead. So um, having a good coach is paramount importance. Like this is not something to just, you know, hire the guy at your gym who looks good or, you know, pick the guy who seems to have the most experience and has done shows before. It's hard, dude, though, because it's like if you don't understand this stuff, how do you know how, who to pick, you know? And I don't really have a good, uh, a good system, to be honest. I made a video a long time ago on why you shouldn't hire people with good genetics, I think. Um, and that video, you know, it's a bit outdated, but it still holds true for the most part in that you don't want to just hire somebody because they have good genetics because they probably didn't go out of their way to learn shit. You know, everything would just work for them. They had everything handed to them on a silver platter. They didn't have to figure anything out. You want to go with guys with, you know, long standing, like credible track records and uh, working with guys who don't have superior genetics and actually making like decent bodybuilders out of them whilst keeping them healthy. That would be the ideal coach, in my opinion, if you were to get like a general recommendation, just like off the bat without having somebody do like an insightful you know, background fucking, you know, analysis of who you're looking at. Like, what is their track record? Have they taken like amateur guys and like made, you know, decent bodybuilders out of them with like not hyper responder genetics? And are their guys healthy? And have they stayed healthy for, you know, years, the years they've worked with that coach? So that would be the only, uh, you know, obviously there's more advice to give, but just off the top of my head, that's what I can think of. Heart attacks, heart problems, fucking organ problems, hair loss problems, like, all this shit that Clen is gonna absolutely increase by about 400,000 fucking percent. Mass E is gonna, is gonna have a detriment on my heart. And it's like, I didn't really necessarily know this shit. That's, and that's why I'm really thankful my show got canceled so I didn't actually have to indulge in that shit. And that was, really, that was a really cool learning experience for me because- The good thing is that everything seemed to be short esters that he was adding in. So master on propionate, boldenone acetate. So you can clear that shit out of your system quickly. Like ideally he wouldn't have been uh, on any of those really to begin with with that coach but i mean at, you know obviously the saving grace i guess was the show getting canceled and then luckily he can clear it out of his system a bit faster because one it showed me you know you don't need a million things to come in looking absolutely crazy like obviously after i learned about what these things were and like all this kind of shit i basically did a little bit of extra research on like even mr olympia's fucking cycles dude no mr olympia is taking fucking eight different things dude like i have i don't want to like say name, like i'm literally just cutting names out because this is about me i don't want to like put it on anybody else but i literally remember listening to this on like a podcast one of the best mr olympias was running three things on his olympia cycle to get him to stage meanwhile i'm an 18 year old kid who just started taking things who just turned 18 years old and you're already trying to get me on fucking four or five more things than like the top of the top are taking so, you know, some of the time though, a lot of those pros, like something I've realized as I go through some of these, uh, you know, Olympia cycles from the nineties, the guys who were interviewed by Tom Platts, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the podcasts and shit, some of it you have to take with a grain of salt too. Cause these guys are trying to make it seem like they have better genetics than they do. Cause no one wants to come across as the abusive guy. Everyone wants to come across as like, even if you're an Olympia competitor, obviously everyone knows you have good genetics, like no shit, but everyone still does not want to come across as the drug abuser. No one wants to come across as the guy who had to run grams of shit to get on stage and do well um, when the next guy could have used half the shit and like still beat you. So it's tough, dude, to differentiate between some of the stuff. But in general, yeah, like no guy on his first show should be stepping on stage on like five or six different things. You know, that's just absolutely unnecessary, especially like in Canada, the shows are like, if you have good genetics, 
running barely anything, like you're going to win like entry level shows. It's not that fucking hard. So, um, he definitely like from what I've seen of him, like I, he definitely didn't need it. All that shit. That shook my fucking world, dude. That shook my world. And that really made me realize, hmm, maybe these people don't have the best interest for me. Maybe I have to take it upon myself to learn. And maybe I don't have to fucking, maybe I can't have somebody behind my back trying to tell me what to do because they are only in it because they want to have that saying and they want to have that, they want to be the person with the credit that basically could go around saying like, I got that kid there. I got that kid on that stage. I made him look like that. Meanwhile, in the next couple of years, bro, if you keep running me on that shit, who knows what the fuck is going to happen, dude? Like, it's just the truth. And it's like, what, what he failed to realize was, bro, I made it so clear. I do not want to do crazy shit. And his main excuse was, oh, well, the guys that you're competing against are taking fucking three times the amount you're taking. I highly doubt they're taking 1,500 fucking milligrams of one thing. One, maybe all of their shit combined, but not one fucking thing. So right there, you're already lying to my fucking face. Why would I trust you? So in conclusion... Those are my two cycles and that is literally all I have taken. I hope you guys listen to it and I hope you guys possibly learn something and I hope you guys realize it's not all fucking Fruit Loops and Rainbows when it comes to this shit. There are scary times if you're doing it wrong. There are fucking, you don't know what's going to happen. If you have never taken things before, your body could not respond as well as fucking Joshua's body across the street, right? He could have the most elite genetics like Ronnie fucking Coleman and he could be taking 200 milligrams of tests and just blow up like a balloon animal where you could take 500 milligrams of tests and do absolutely fucking nothing. Like that does not mean it's not working for you. And that does not mean that you need to take more. It's just, you need to step back and reevaluate. Maybe my diet is off. Maybe my fucking training is not, or maybe my training is off. Maybe this is off. This is off. This is off. This is off. Steroids is not the fucking answer. And I want to get that so clear to especially the younger generation that is watching this you got now a lot of the generation younger generation is gonna be like bullshit it's all the gear and it's like i don't just say this too because i'm trying to like dissuade people from taking shit i can absolutely assure you the difference between a guy who is dialed in on his diet and training and is taking one quarter of like the same guy like let's just say we take me even when i've tried like the kitchen sink approach and trust me i have tried the kitchen sink approach in the past with cycles like comparable to what he just showed, probably maybe even with more shit, because I'd have like T3 in there, I'd have like uh, fucking appetite suppressants, like like the whole gambit of shit. So I'd have like, you know, test, trend, mast, fucking T3, clen, other shit. And um, that, you know, doing the whole, and then like throwing in like fucking proviron at the end unnecessarily with like a little bit of fucking something else, that shit would produce a worse physique when I tried the kitchen sink approach with like half-ass diet and training. And like, I was still going like reasonably like trying, but it was like a more lenient, if it fits your macros a little bit, you know, a little bit less cardio when I should be doing it kind of approach. Like, oh, I'll just like drug my way to fat loss more than doing the fucking cardio and shit like that. Or I'll just, you know, not have to deal with eating as little. I'll just take more of a fucking, you know, metabolism booster. I'll just, I'll just crank the T3 a bit harder. I'll just fucking throw in some DNP. You know, that kind of shit produces a worse physique than when I would do like a mild like test base plus an anabolic on top and that was it and just like went like 100% balls deep with the diet and training. And I know that sounds hard for some people to believe, but it's actually the pros and the top guys when they say this shit, you know, sometimes I do think they underplay their use severely. Like some of them do. Some are actually pretty, you know, transparent and very uh, um, commendable for, you know, telling the truth about what they do. But when they say that like diet and training is like super crucial, they're not just saying it. Like it is actually the difference between your physique like winning and looking like shit, you know? Like if you could take all the drugs in the world, but this shit is not dialed in, you're not gonna get the results you want. There's, there's a reason why, like obviously genetic response plays a huge role too, because there's, you know, guys like Kevin Lavroni who show up to their first show and blow everyone out of the water eating fucking McDonald's every day, which is like actually what he did, <laughs> believe it or not. But some people, you know, like you need to be 100% on your shit, diet and training wise, to get what you're trying to get out of the drugs. It's just how it works, you know? I've tried the kitchen sink approach with my genetics and the kitchen sink approach with like, you know, like a little bit of a half ass diet and training versus like dialed in diet and training plus one quarter of the drugs. The one quarter of the drugs worked infinitely better that is watching this, you guys got to realize I make my own choices in my life. And I know you guys do too as well, but this is where I stand. I have been in this game since I was 12 years old, boys. I'm 18 turning 19 this year. That's about six to seven years of actual hard learning experience, trial and error, dieting every fucking year from that point, training every fucking year from that point. 
and getting to a position where that is that genuinely is what I need to do to get myself to the next level. I can't just be eating 300 more calories a week. I can't be training a little bit extra harder. Like, bro, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you guys and let you guys know about my experience with it, bro. When I hopped on that test, dude, my lifts blew up like a motherfucker. My strength blew up like a motherfucker. My size blew up like a motherfucker. Dude, when I was, when I was natty, the biggest that I got to was 220 pounds. Okay. I was fat. I was so fat. All right. I, dude, I was so fat to the point where like, it was borderline obese. I got my body mass index fucking, I got my body mass index tested and it literally came out to be morally obese. That's literally just how chubby I was because <laughs> I'm such a short frame and to put that much size on as a natural person, I don't know what it was, bro, but it just wasn't healthy. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you guys like what my progress was basically from a natural to my first day of painting. So I'm going to plug up a couple pictures here, show you guys my first day of lifting, show you guys my last day of lifting as a natural. I'm going to show you guys my first day of lifting as a as a fake natty, I guess you could say, compared to right now. So obviously you can tell there's a big difference between there. There is a huge difference between muscle maturity, muscle size, and muscle density. That's basically like the main three things that I noticed. It was obviously those aspects that basically like blew me away the most because I got to a point where, dude, at the beginning of my prep, so at the beginning of my prep, I weighed 185 pounds, okay? I didn't think like if I were to cut starting from that point, going to my, going to my show, I probably would have weighed 167, 168, like stage weight or whatever. And I literally just thought about that. And I'm like, this isn't going to be enough, man. Like, holy shit. Like considering I want to be the youngest in the world, this isn't going to cut it. So I had to really think about it hard, man. It took me about a full month to finally make that decision being like, let's fucking do this shit boys. So I did that. And basically ever since then, I've been trying to learn through trial and error and just what feels good, what makes me feel off, you know, certain foods and stuff that might make me react a little bit differently than they used to make me react, et cetera, et cetera. Like literally just fine tuning me to figure out what works for me because something could work for, you know, my old coach as an example, Oh, well, this works for me. And you know, uh, this saturates my body for, or this saturates my body in two weeks, not four. And it's like, well, scientifically through fucking hundreds of studies that have been fucking literally tested, like through so many people, and this is saying that it takes four weeks. I am not going to listen to you. I am not going to literally fucking base my opinion off of yours, avoiding hundreds of other scientifically proven opinions. It's like ridiculous. That would be so, that'd be immature. I mean, it'd be, it'd be immature. It'd be closed minded. It'd be stupid of me to even do that. So I really had to take it upon myself and ignore even what I, even the people that I first thought knew everything. I later on down the road started to realize maybe not, maybe they don't have the best interest for me. Maybe they really are only in this to get me to that level of like, holy shit, I got that kid there, rub it off in people's faces, blah, blah, blah. But like my heart starts to do some weird things. I start to lose all my hair. I start to fucking like, bro, I got nice hair, dude. I don't want to be losing my hair like that, especially at 18 years old, man. Like I have made the amount of progress that I have made naturally. What makes fucking you, <laughs> what makes you think I need all of this shit to fucking compensate for that other stuff? Like, bro, I don't need that much stuff to get me to the next level. I only need a little bit. I only need enough to fucking basically get me above average with my hormone levels and shit. I don't need something that gets me to the point where I'm fucking Superman, dude. I don't need that. I can train hard enough without it. I can eat enough without it. I don't need appetite increasing whatever they're called. I don't need things that increase my appetite. I can already eat a lot. I can drink a lot of water. My mentality and the demons that have built up inside of me, those literally are enough to get me past sticking points, dude. Me having all this built up emotion, built up feeling, built up mental distress has literally driven me to fucking go crazy in life. To literally just say, fuck everybody, fuck everyone's opinions. This is what I want to do in life. How do I get there? Who do I need to, di who do I need to avoid? Who do I need to block out? Who will help me and who will not? It's as simple as that. I want what I want because I live my own life. Jimmy doesn't live my life for me. Fucking Gordon doesn't live my life for me. Jay Cutler doesn't live my life for me. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm not, I'm not like your average teenager. I'm not just going to be full of ego and be like, Oh fucking, this is working because this is works for that guy. And you know, fucking this guy's telling me to take rad 140 because it's really good for putting on size and increasing your appetite and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't give a fuck, dude. It's like, that's not a problem in my life. Those are not problematic enough to the point where I need to compensate for that by taking something when I can already do it. When I genuinely just need to dig deep down and fucking ask myself, how bad do you want this shit? How fucking bad do you want it compared to anybody else? I know deep down inside, I know it's on the top of my fucking head too. I live with this shit every fucking day. I want this way more than people think that I want this. Okay. I, I will die for this. I will absolutely die for this. 
I will die for doing what I love because if I die happy, at least I knew I chased my dreams and I chased my goals and I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. Instead of dying, being all sad and sorrow, being like, I wish I did that or I regret not doing this or I wish I took that step in life. No, I want to die knowing that I pushed myself. I fucking did everything. No, I did everything that everybody told me I could not. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just going to jump ahead and see if there's more. Because uh, I'm assuming you guys don't want me to react to like motivational talk. So let's jump ahead here. You fuck up good. You fuck up really good. So I hope you guys really, really take the time to rewatch this and really, really think about making that decision. Really go back and under Derek, where he was literally dedicated the last how many years specifically studying. Jesus Christ. I just jumped to a random spot. It's like Derek, like right at my fucking face. Let me go back. It's as simple as that. Are you going to listen to that power lifter dude who has never accomplished anything in his life? who has literally just been taking shit to take it for funsies in comparison to Derek, where he was literally dedicated the last how many years specifically studying what he is studying right now with PEDs, with steroids, with the anabolic tree, with literally everything along those lines. He has dedicated his life to doing this. This is what he's good at. Just like I am good at training, I am good at doing what I'm good at doing because I have put in the time for it. I have put in the hours for it. I have dedicated everything for this. I have eliminated my distractions. I have eliminated party time. I have eliminated hanging out with friends to work out, to eat my meals, to do everything I want to fucking do that everybody tells me is a fucking mistake. I'm going to be a failure. I am losing all my friends and I'm losing family and I am losing the people in my life that care about me. For what? For me to achieve my goals. But you got to realize this. I do not want to listen to people who are not in a position I want to be in. Why would I listen to you, store clerk, if I want to be Mr. Olympia and you're trying to give me cycle advice? Bullshit. I'm not going to. It's as simple as that. Imagine you're just trying to buy your fucking groceries. They're like, you know your cycle's shit. You should be taking this. <laughs> so... Take your safety precautions, do your research and don't be a retard and don't listen to everybody that has an opinion because everybody has an opinion just like everyone has an asshole. And it's the, it is literally the truth, bro. That is literally the closest thing to the truth. Everyone will have an opinion, whether it's based off an emotional state, a statistical state, a factual state, there will be an opinion. And 99.9% .9 of people that you actually meet literally form their shit off of an emotional opinion, an emotional standpoint. When you get into an argument with someone, literally take this, in, take this into consideration right now. When you get into an argument with someone and they start to get heated up and they start to get mad, angry, and you're literally just chill, chilling there like, no, I know my shit. Like, I'm literally like, nothing's controlling me other than like facts and stats and everything. Emotional. You don't argue through emotion. You need confluence. You need confirmations. You need more than. Listen to people who know more than you. Do your research. Uh, if you guys need reference points, man, my biggest reference. My biggest reference point is DerekMorePlaceMoreDates.com. So if you guys want to go there and check out his shit, obviously I'll leave the link in the bio down below or whatever. But seriously, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your days to listen to me talk. And even though there's going to be a lot of negative opinions, like I already know this, I already know there's going to be because in my daily day-to-day -day life, like that's just, that's how it is, man. And I, I can't do anything to stop that shit. I can't stop you guys from having your own opinions and shit. So spew it. I don't care. The comment section is there for you for a reason. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the journey to pro. And I'm not stopping. Nothing's going to stop me. You guys are not going to stop me. You guys are only going to inspire me to do even better. So I appreciate you guys. Love y'all. And hope you guys have a good rest of your day. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was good. Thanks for the shout out. I appreciate it. You can already hear more plates, more dates commentary to this. That is, uh, yeah. So anyway, at the end of the day, you know, everything he said is pretty uh, mature for his age, to be honest, as far as he understands that this is not, uh, something that, you know, is a, it's not a healthy thing to do. It's something that he's imposing upon himself to reach a you know extraordinary goal that is uh, going to be very difficult to achieve and unfortunately is likely only accomplished via you know enhancement practices and he's not saying that anyone else should do it um he's trying to not influence you know his young audience i'm sure you can only do so much you know warning them against it if you're showing your fucking sick physique all the time and you're saucy it's kind of like I don't know, like how much can you knock the guy for being in the fitness industry, industry, showing his physique, like he's already come out and said what he does. If another kid, you know, sees his shit and gets influenced enough to do something dumb, like they need to do their research too. That's exactly what he's saying. Everyone needs to do their research and figure their shit out before they just haphazardly jump on stuff. And I think I pretty much gave my feedback throughout the video sufficiently. So I think we're gonna cut it off here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplace underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas that design myself from scratch, as well as my recommended lab test panels and diagnostics, especially if this is a path you are going to go down, you will need to have good diagnostics to figure out what is going on with your health, especially 
not just pre and post cycle, like during the fucking main shit storm of whatever you're using, you want to see how bad this stuff is affecting your biomarkers as well as getting uh, organ imaging and stuff like that on a regular enough basis, ideally. Like, you know, I would highly prioritize diagnostics and lab work over, you know, that extra kit of fucking GH or whatever it is. Cause at the end of the day, this stuff is not healthy and you need to, you know, wrap your head around it that even if you're young, the shit will catch up to you, you know? It's just a matter of time. So make sure you stay on top of your health stuff and if you want, uh, you know, to check out the lab test panels, blah, 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 it's all down there and you can add your own uh, single biomarkers to the profiles if they, uh, you know, it's missing something that you need to add. And obviously this is, you know, a general um, statement to anybody. I think everyone, not just people on gear, should be, you know, getting blood work and assessing their health status, obviously. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.